To the south of the People's Republic of China, Hong Kong occupies a strategic position on the coast right alongside the Pearl River. This is an ideal site because it includes territory on the continent and more than 260 islands. Hong Kong was a very busy port well before the arrival of Westerners at the beginning of the 16th century. In spite of pirates, the European maritime powers all rushed for one of the rare passageways to China. Commerce expanded, even if, officially, the Europeans had come to evangelize the country. In 1842, the British founded a colony there that provided them with tea, porcelain, and silk. It was an Englishman that discovered the flower of a tree, here called Bauhinia. Close to an orchard, it symbolizes Hong Kong, which has been part of China again since 1997. Their flags fly together, but the Chinese flag is larger and higher. Hong Kong means Port of the Perfumes in Cantonese. It is both the name of the territory and of an island. Opposite, the Kowloon Peninsula is very near. It is accessible from Hong Kong by the Star Ferry and by two tunnels built under the bay. The highest point rises to over 950 meters. Hong Kong is hilly on the islands as well as on the mainland. To reduce the frequent landslips, the steep slopes are reinforced, but plant life is carefully preserved. Every individual has a well-defined place in a city with more than seven million inhabitants. Ninety-five percent of the population is of Chinese origin, but foreigners are very much present. Many come from Indonesia and the Philippines. Space is rare, so real estate could only develop upwards. Even cemeteries have extra stories. With more than 6,000 inhabitants per square kilometer, the population of Hong Kong is breaking records. Population density is 200 times higher than in the average medium-sized European city. There's something of a Manhattan in a city that still makes use of traditional techniques like bamboo scaffoldings. However, colonial architecture is not necessarily sacrificed to urban growth. When threatened, it is protected. In the face of modernity, traditional values are given deep respect. The two ancient religions, Buddhism and Taoism, are widely practiced. Tradition has remained strong in the face of both Western values and Chinese communism. In fact, other modes of thinking, other religions, have found a haven in Hong Kong. The fulfillment of the spirit through control of the body is a permanent quest in Hong Kong. The ways of obtaining it vary according to the budget available to spend on it. Golf is expensive and reserved to a privileged few. The leisure culture has not developed to the detriment of traditional activities, many of which have not changed for centuries. An important part of the day is devoted to meals. The preparations have, in some cases, become more elaborate, but the gestures are the same. Whenever and wherever appetite strikes, people eat. In Hong Kong, time is precious. Hong Kong doesn't possess any natural resources, but its economy is one of the most successful in the world. In spite of China's opening its frontiers, it transits 40% of its exports through Hong Kong. It's the world's leading port in container traffic. On a simpler level, Cardboard boxes are being delivered everywhere in thousands. The Hong Kong Stock Exchange is the second biggest in Asia, behind Tokyo. 
but the revenue per inhabitant is above that of Japan and all European countries. Figures in commerce and business are following upward curves in many fields. Traditional sectors have doubled, and now more recent activities such as cinema production have achieved great heights. Hong Kong has become a real star, and she wants to look like one. The city lives at a high tempo, but sometimes it has to slow down. Tickets are received the same way, everywhere. Hong Kong has made great efforts to facilitate exchange between different parts of the territory. Everything possible has been done to improve the mobility of the workers. The city is lively, but it wants to shine. For such an outward-looking country, it's a question of image. And the image is good if the development in tourism is anything to go by. Hong Kong is the seventh most visited tourist destination in the world. Tourists are looking at Hong Kong in a new way these days. Initiation in ancestral traditions has been added to the tourist programs. And the language is not a problem. In this way, certain traditions make a world tour. Hong Kong wants to be loved. The city's ambition is to shine like a star. Hong Kong wants to reach the summits, but it needs to have the necessary intellectual and material means to do so. In the beginning, it was too small to possess sufficient resources, but everything changed with the coming of communism in China. Yon Fan is an actor and director. Hong Kong is a place where that all the talent from China, they came to Hong Kong at uh, the changing of uh, the regime. And then the talents in Hong Kong and they flourish and then they import everything, the best opportunities and the best talent into the movie industry. And then they create a lot of original things, the originality of glamour, the originality of action and everything. That is the reason why that Hong Kong film industry, without any help from the government, was uh, flourishing into one of the biggest and most important movie industry in the world. Today, Hong Kong is a special administrative region of the popular Republic of China. How could an ultra-liberal city integrate with China? Sherman Kung is an architect. Hong Kong has been always independent, particularly on the economic development. When we design building, basically, it's relating to a personal development or to an institution. Therefore, there's nothing to do with the politics. Also, that years later, in the 70s and 80s, Hong Kong is becoming very international. So all the best people from all over the world, they came to Hong Kong, and they think Hong Kong is a free port. It's free in ideas, and it's free in tax and is free in many other aspects. So Hong Kong became very international. Therefore, you have international architects coming to do works in Hong Kong. Uh, you have people from Europe, you have people from the uh, United States, from Australia. They all come to Hong Kong because Hong Kong is a stepping stone for you to do anything in China. So Hong Kong has been a melting pot because of, also because the, in the old days, a British colony. Therefore, Hong Kong actually absorbed all the best of the Western world and also the best of the Eastern world and sort of melting together and develop according to the requirements. Skyscrapers soar in tight rows on the island of Hong Kong. 
There are fewer of them, however, on the Kowloon Peninsula. This is because the construction of tall buildings was forbidden near the old airport. Today, available land is very much sought after. But on Hong Kong side, because the land is very scarce, it's only along the edge of the island that you have fat land to build the building. Therefore, the, most of the building had to go up higher and higher. Yes, in Hong Kong, buildings are getting higher and higher, but just how high can they go? <laughs> Actually, there's no limit to it. It depends on the requirement, requirement of the homeland, the financial situation. Nathan Road, Kowloon. The Golden Mile is the southern part of the street. It's a commercial district that's always on the move. When Hong Kong became English, Nathan Road was the first road laid out in Kowloon. Nathan was the name of a British governor. The streets are closed to traffic near Temple Street as of 7.30 p.m. That's when the night market starts. Like in ladies' market, commerce is divided up into centers of interest. The choice is so huge here, it's impossible not to find what you're looking for. The copper of a traditional pharmacy now make up the setting for a no less traditional fast food. In Hong Kong, nothing is lost. Everything is used creatively. Each street has its own speciality. The red fish in the gold fish market play an important role in everyday life. They bring good luck. If placed in a comfortable aquarium, in odd numbers, they keep bad spirits away. In the jade market, the famous stone can be found in all its forms. It is supposed to protect those who wear it, and contrary to a widespread belief, jade is not always green. It comes in a wide range of colors. Some say that jade is living and changes color on contact with the body. But not only jade is sold in the jade market. Birds are also very popular in Hong Kong. A whole market is devoted to them. Some varieties are sought out for their song. Other birds are supposed to bring luck to their owners. Owners and birds sometimes become games partners. The flower market evokes Hong Kong's subtropical climate. Vegetal species adopt original forms. There is sometimes a thin line between the plant and the animal world, and nature takes pleasure in confusing things. Shapes and colors are surprising. So, why not blue roses? On the island of Hong Kong beats the heart of the city central, the finance and business district. The venerable double-decker tramway slides along in the shadows of the temples of modern architecture. The only double-decked electric tramway in the world dates back to 1904. The old and the modern cohabit in architecture as well. Once their colony was established,
the English started the construction of new buildings. Their architects imported styles that were in fashion among British bourgeois and aristocrats of the 19th century. Miraculously, islands of greenery have survived in a city where every bit of land is valuable. Unsuspected oases emerge in the middle of a forest of stone. These havens of peace are evidence that the city is trying to maintain a human dimension. The Hong Kong Park covers dozens of acres in the middle of Central. Nothing disturbs the locals here. Tropical birds show off for the visiting photographers. A pair of cockatoes do the house cleaning in their new home. The birds like things to shine too. They want to really uh, show their beautiful plumage to the female. Right in the center of Hong Kong, if you have the time, you can enjoy the simple pleasure of watching a bird make its nest. Nature in the middle of the city is a priceless luxury. Sometimes it has to be modeled, but if respected, it will express itself, especially in color. In the heart of Central, certain traditions remain too. The tea house is one of them. It's an unusual place where the art of preparing the beverage is transmitted. Sheikh Kwai Sim explains the ritual. There will be a long, long route to teach. We can't say you just one step into the lakcha to learn how to brew a cup of tea, but instead of how to brew a cup of tea, it's something we call tea ceremony. It's a thing. We need our lifelong time to have it, to practice it, and according to our experience and also the thing, the way you do it, and that will become part of your attitude. The way you treat the tea, the way you how to handle the accessories, the way how you think about your friends who enjoy your tea, they will become gradually a part of your personality. In the midst of skyscrapers, Hollywood Road is the antique dealer's district. Many different cultures have left traces in Hong Kong. Hollywood Road is like an inventory of them a bric-a-brac that spreads from medieval to contemporary times, a mixture of different beliefs and philosophies. Time passes, and some ideologies have been put on the antique shelf. However, some ancient customs prevail. 3,000 years ago, seals were in widespread use to validate official documents. The art of making seals is half sculpture, half calligraphy. The bay and the city of Hong Kong are dominated by Victoria Peak, which is 552 meters high. A cable car has been running since the end of the 19th century. 
pulled by a steel cable, it climbs at a rate of six meters a second. After a 10 minute journey, the car arrives at its destination. Anthony O oh is the technical supervisor. The major reasons to have to build the tram because the British want to bring the citizens up to the pit to enjoy the cool air during the summer uh, hot air. Nowadays, major of the passengers is the tourists. We still have some local commuter, but not many as before. In Hong Kong, there are often many hills and steep slopes to contend with. Stairs were built using the granite from ballasts of the ships that came from England before they left for home, again loaded with cargo. There have been other solutions found to overcome the slope, like the longest moving footpath in the world. In the mornings, it goes in one direction, towards downtown, and in the evening, it goes away from town. The city's lines are unpredictable. They follow geometric forms and then suddenly they stop. They twist and curve for no apparent reason. Other forms, other silhouettes. Underneath a concrete slab, William Enger gives a Tai Chi lesson. Tai Chi is a physical exercise which is beneficial to both our body and mind. Tai Chi was created by watching and imitating the life and gestures of animals and based on the theory of yin and yang of the cosmos. Yin and yang means negative and positive, and so Tai Chi is philosophy. Inhale when you are up. Tai Chi is based on relaxation and the mastering of oneself. It improves the circulation of energy in the body. Feng Shui has the same objectives, optimizing the circulation of energy, but the means are not the same because Feng Shui works with reshaping the environment. By improving the quality of the environment we live in, we improve life. Alex Yu teaches Feng Shui. Feng Shui is a very, very complicated know-how. Some said Feng Shui is a, a philosophy. Some said Feng Shui is a science. Some said Feng Shui is a metaphysics. Some said Feng Shui is a superstition. And I think all these are Feng Shui, because a long, long story from ancient China for more than 3,000 years. Top left corner is two. Feng Shui is more than the furnishing of a house. In fact, it controls the circulation of qi. Taking care of the body means relying on medicine, Chinese medicine. This is based on the idea that every mineral, vegetal, or animal has virtues that are beneficial to man. Chinese medicine prescribes infusions of roots, concoctions of dried lizard, snake soup, remedies that were invented thousands of years ago. Acupuncture, a therapeutic art also based on the flow of energy. It captures positive and negative energies by pricking specific cutaneous zones. The needles direct the energy, for example, to rebalance the workings of an organ. There are specific points where positive energy is tonified. Philip Lee is a specialist. According to certain Acupuncture points, we put needles on it. 
And uh, in the ancient time, the people do stimulate the needle by using the fingers. But now today, we use the machine to stimulate the power into the body and stimulate the channel. And um, for the time being, apart from putting needles on it, we do the mossy portion as well. The mossy portion is a kind of leaves with medication and they compress into a cigar-like tube and we burn it and try to apply it to the acupuncture point. So that will stimulate the blood circulation and also to let the medical or, or the meditation go through the body. In Chinese medicine, all illnesses are the result of blockages or energetic imbalances. Tai Chi, Feng Shui, drugs and acupuncture work together to relieve the same sicknesses. Kowloon Park, a Sunday afternoon. The parks of Hong Kong are meeting points for Tai Chi and gymnastics adepts. They both have the same objective, balancing energies. Tai Chi is a martial art, like Kung Fu. Martial arts were practiced in China 3,000 years before Christ, but Kung Fu only appeared in the 6th century of our era. It was popularized in the West thanks to films shot in Hong Kong. Kung Fu was said to have been invented by a Buddhist monk. Struck by the bad physical condition of the other monks, he imposed this discipline. A healthy body is beneficial to meditation. It's important to start early. Kowloon, the Tai Sin Temple. The divinities are honored by a succession of offerings, but the intention is not disinterested. The offering is a real transaction, giving to receive a favor in return. After the ceremony, the offerings are taken back by the donator. On the ground itself, a checkerboard indicates the will of the gods. No offering is made without incense sticks. Hong Kong has been making and exporting incense sticks since its beginnings. This balmy business is at the origin of the island's name. The Wong Tai Sin Temple is a place of worship for three different religions, Buddhism, Taoism, Confucianism. They all gather round a sculpture representing six rams. It's a symbol of peace. Religious temples are often very near games temples. The Happy Valley Hippodrome is a buzz with bets even before the start of the first race. Horse racing has attracted crowds since the 19th century. The races have always taken place here because it is the only flat bit of land in the territory.
Asiatics are known for being straight-faced, but sometimes at Happy Valley, they let their real feelings be known. It all depends on the results. On the north coast, the island of Hong Kong almost disappears beneath the buildings. But as soon as you go southwards, you're in another world. Vegetation is abundant. That's one of the reasons an attraction park was built here. Most of the attractions have nothing natural about them, but nature lovers can meet some interesting friends. The giant panda is the undisputed star. His favorite meal is not too hard, bamboo shoots. The animal only lives in the wild state in the high altitude forests in the center of China. The sea also has its secrets to display. Life in a coral reef has been reconstructed, including fauna. The curious shark ray is followed by the whip-tailed stingray with its venomous horn. But other, less expected stars perform a spectacular ballet. Jellyfish floating weightlessly through an eerie light. On the beach of Repulse Bay, the silhouette of buildings is studied to resist typhoons, which can be violent on the south coast. Aberdeen is an old fishing port. Nowadays, pleasure craft almost outnumber the tanker fishing boats. The tanker are an ethnic Chinese minority. Traditionally, sampans are piloted by women. The tanker learned how to deal with the modern world a long time ago. In the bay are floating restaurants. Sometimes the Chinese come from afar to share in a family meal in the largest of these, which can serve up to 3,000 meals simultaneously. Celebrations are plentiful in the Hong Kong calendar. The lantern celebration is the festival of Chinese lanterns. It closes the celebrations for the Lunar New Year. October the 1st, Hong Kong's national holiday. Multicolor butterflies are released by the thousands of fireworks which light the night skies. Fireworks were invented in China and Hong Kong likes to shine in the firmament of stars. Lantau, an island twice as large as Hong Kong. For a long time, Lantau was very rural, almost wild. On the side of Lantau is the Shek Laptok Airport, which was built on a site three quarters recovered from the ocean. It was built by British architect Norman Foster.
Clean lines, fluid forms, minimalist decoration, these are the marks of an ultra-functional airport. Art, comfort, intimacy, large areas have been devoted to relaxation and to work. In Hong Kong, work, business sense do not impede imagination. The airport was built to welcome 80 million passengers a year. That's more than 10 times the population of Hong Kong. Eternal China has not disappeared behind the hills of Lantau. On the contrary, it is firmly attached to the summit. The biggest seated Buddha in Asia dominates the valley. The bronze statue belongs to the Po Lin Monastery. Inside the main temple, other seated Buddhas sit on lotus flowers. The lotus is a symbol of purity for Buddhists. The touristic vocation of the monastery brought about serious economic consequences. The monks had to adapt to the presence of visitors. On one side of Lantau, the village of Tai O boasts the last houses on stilts in Hong Kong. The village was founded by the tanker fishermen. The tanker used to be made fun of by the Continentals. Since the coming of the popular republic, they benefit from the same rights as other Chinese. Some people nickname them the Gypsies of the Sea. Hong Kong has another continental entity, situated between the Kowloon Peninsula and the Chinese border, the New Territories. With the expansion of infrastructures, the portion of territory given over to agriculture has been reduced progressively. Ancient fortifications still protect the village of Kat Hing Wai, whose origins go back to the beginning of the 17th century. The village is tiny, and the little streets are narrow, but visiting it reveals surprises. a hacker woman with her best hat. The hackers arrived here some time ago from the north of China. In a forest of bamboo, one alley is guarded by two rows of golden statues, the Arats. Arat means venerable in Sanskrit. The Arats are Buddhist saints who have reached Nirvana. The path leads to a monastery, a place of tradition and serenity, even if the modern world is nearby. In the main room, surprise, an incredible collection of little statues decorate the walls. The monastery of the 10,000 Buddhas merits its name. The Mei Po Marsh is also a sanctuary, a sanctuary of wildlife. On the other side is China. In Hong Kong, the middle of autumn is a time of celebration. It's the festival of Chinese lanterns. The night shines with a thousand flames. Colors blur in the luminous halos. 
Electric garlands and lit buildings are the backdrop for celebration, and the dragon plays a big role in it all. In China, certain dragons cause eclipses, then night marries day. The sky and the earth melt into each other. Even the ground is covered in stars. The lanterns give homage to the full harvest moon. It's the high point of harvest. A season of prosperity is beginning under the protection of the heavenly divinities. Chinese opera is both a battle against evil spirits and a way of celebrating the harvests. A very important moment in the festival takes place in a little temple. The star is there, but it's hard to get near him. The star, a fantastic creature, a symbol of power, omnipresent in Chinese culture, he who brings the rain. His Majesty, the dragon. Lotus flowers, like all vegetation and all forms of life, exist thanks to the dragon. By thousands, incense sticks accompany the dragon. The thicker the sticks, the happier the dragon. Between the head and the tail, the 70-meter-long body is covered in thousands of incense sticks. The star of the festival is undoubtedly the dragon. So where does he come from? In 1880, there was an epidemic in the village of Taihan. It was transmitted by rats. Many young people died. One of the villagers dreamt of a Buddhist priest who told him, you must build a dragon. And the villager told the others. So the people built a dragon and the epidemic went away. Since then, they celebrate every year and there have been no more epidemics. When the incense sticks are burnt out, they are replaced. The dragon wants it so for they have another use. We burn incense to create smoke. We also light firecrackers, and that gives off chemical smells. The smoke and the smell spread out and kill the virus. Then we feel safe and peace returns. Hong Kong lives in a permanent light that the sky and the water emit. The city produces a show of its own, and under the lights, the main role is played by the skyscrapers themselves. Through the whirlwinds of history, Hong Kong has never stopped shining. The city captures mindsets and changes perspectives. It makes things possible, and its influence is felt over an entire continent. Hong Kong is uh, very fascinating. It's, uh, like in the movies that you have uh, great stars and then they fade away and then during a period of time and you said, oh, we're running out of stars and running out of talent. And then surprisingly, there are some people coming up Wherever they came from, they have to flourish in Hong Kong because I think Hong Kong is a place that really gives the stars some genuine star quality touch. To 
be a star, Hong Kong has shown the way. Perhaps all we need to do is to follow in the trail of the star of China. Thank mm -hmm. you.